the second of May. Week five, week six, week five. End of week five of lockdown. Today, I'm going to do something using Y East 1318 because that's the only one that I've got a starter that I've made. So, thinking New England IPA ish again. Uh, I'm going to mix the grain bill up a bit and instead of just using Pilsner and Malt, I'm going to add some Maris Otter, Carapils. Yeah, we'll just see where we go. Um, Then, I'm going to experiment with, as some of you who follow this nonsense will know, I have an ongoing issue with filtering. Well, I say f sort of filtering issue, it's not really a, a filtering issue. It's more an issue with um, me not wanting to bugger up the plate chiller. Realistically, anything that goes in there could be cleaned out by back flushing with, um, with that stuff. A mixture of that stuff caustic soda sodium hydroxide that would clean all that out <clears throat> but I don't like using that as yeah as a, as a standard go-to that's what I'll use for deep cleaning normally for cleaning through I will we'll use um, sodium percarbonate which doesn't leave anything nasty that you really need to flush away anyway enough of that part of this filtration um, exercise is I'm today going to try uh, this is a, a kind of sanitary spool tube and it's got a, a large one of these in which I'm about to swap out these are your standard hop filters um, which this one needs to go through the microwave uh, microwave yeah actually let's put it through the microwave that'll be fun this needs to go through the dishwasher because it's still got some muck left on it but I'm going to put one of these in there. Let me take this off and show you it because I'm a bit of a clumsy twat at the moment dropping stuff and ting. Now obviously the first question is why have I got cam lock here and tri clamp here and it's because of fitting it because you couldn't push that one up and that one down at the same time. So what I do is I clip that on or put that on without tightening it, align that then put the tri clamp on. Uh, yeah anyhow here we have and this is one of Clive Sillis's idea um, was to get the uh, simple um, tri clamp to half inch BSP and then I had this tapped to take the what are these called bazooka tube things so anyway now uh, what I was going to do oh hang on yeah, what I was going to do is have a um, six inch filter then going through a sight glass so I could see while transferring from the mash tun to the boiler how clear this was after sparging and also whether or not I was getting any bits in there. Uh, sadly, it's too long so I'm going to get a, a shorter sight glass with just tri clamp fittings that will go straight onto here which will then make it the same length <clears throat> as this 30 centimeter spool tube so anyway I've, I've swapped the um, 30 centimeter I can't do centimeters the 12 inch for the 6 inch and so that's just going to go in there need to squish the end down a little bit before it go in and then that will go back between these two. Well, that was that was a that was a long-winded explanation of the uh, the filtering. The other thing is, <clears throat> I like to get the most out of the boiler at the end. Uh, I don't like that, you know, where you've got a liter and a half, two liters in the bottom. It's a bit wasteful. So, what am I trying now? I did try just with one of those little bazooka tubes in the bottom, but it was running the risk of getting clogged up, even with a whirlpool to pull everything into the centre. So I tried these uh, tea infusion things, um, which is only a quid or so, and uh, it's designed for tea infusions. 
And I did try it for hops once, but it was just absolutely bloody rubbish because they get bunged up too, too quickly. Because if you put a tiny amount of hops in there, they expand exponentially bigly. Right, so I've got one of those. And I don't know if you can see down there, I cut a hole in it, um, put a fitting through there with a couple of washers and then squished it down underneath the... So there's more surface area. Um, Oh, end up killing myself in a minute. There's more surface area here than here, and I think the mesh is slightly smaller, a smaller micronera. So that is now with the fitting and squished down in the bottom of the kettle. All right, let's get ready to start getting everything, water additions and stuff ready, and then when uh, when we're there. I'll come back and we'll, we'll start mashing in. Watery additions. I'm using 50 litres of reverse osmosis. What I do is I fill the entire HLT up. Um, I don't muck around adding bits into the mash and then other bit. You know, I just treat the whole batch of water as if it's come out of the tap in the area where this particular profile would be appropriate. Yeah, yeah, okay. So for 50 litres, 7.2 7 grams of gypsum, gram of salt, 2.5 grams of magnesium, and 14.2 grams of calcium chloride. So the chloride sulfate ratio is kind of sort of like almost reversed. And, and I, yeah, it's close enough, two to one. Good, right. Bung that in, bring it up to temp, and then let's get mashing in. Uh, I'm going to take, um, after I've put that in and recircled it around for a little bit, I'm going to take a, a pH reading just to make sure um, and then get mashed in. HLT is up to a temperature, so just transferring into the mash tun. Then I'll bung that little lot in. That little lot consists of three kilograms of Pilsner malt, uh, 500 grams of Vienna malt, 250 grams carapils um, and then a light Maris Otter, uh, crisp Maris Otter, 1.163 kilograms. You're probably wondering why that specific number is because that was what was left over in the bag and I weren't going to keep 163 grams for nothing. Tortified flaked oats with the husk on, one kilogram and jumbo oats uh, 100 grams and the reason for that is because the husk on on the tortified flaked oats I'm thinking probably about 10% of that isn't usable because they're husk we we'll see so I've added some jumbo oats 100 grams so this is nearly I'm going to chuck 15 litres into the mash tun and then start gently stirring all that in but that takes me about 10 minutes maybe a bit longer because i like to do it and get no dough balls there is no prizes for speed when um doughing in so back after i've chucked it all in and stirred it all up a bit and we're ready to start mashing times we are mashing in i'm shutting the uh shutter mainly because it's getting a little bit chilly outside and i still haven't i know sorry greg still haven't uh lagged my mash tun that is on my list it might be something i do next week um, however just judging by today since started making this video i've done three support phone calls and uh which I prefer to do. And this can, because there's plenty of downtime brewing. Um, so I don't mind, you know, I've got an hour now about to make another call. Um, so that's good. Um, but that lagging that is it's a job that I'll have to focus on a little bit and do it on a day that I'm not going to be taking any support calls. Uh, yes, so we've got an hour. Maybe a little bit longer, 
Then I'll do um, a test uh, just with the iodine droplets. Uh, should we then have achieved a decent conversion, I will transfer into the boiler and we'll get it going. There's no early hop additions, there's only late hop additions. I need to make my mind up what sort of hops I'm going to use because this is a bit of a bodge, obviously. Um, it's sort of rough, roughly based around um, the New England IPA from uh, Homebrew Beer with Greg Hughes. Uh, is it Greg Hughes? I'm fairly sure it is. Um, and also, sort of like nicking a couple of ideas from Timmy Jenkins and a few other people. So we'll see. We'll see where we go with this. It is a, it's a pure bodge. Um, who knows? Might come out all right. I know the final hops I'm probably going to use are either Citra and Rakao, or 150 grams of each, or Citra and Idaho 7. Not sure. Uh, my friends down the road, the brewery of St. Mars of the Desert, may drop me off a can of their latest, I think it's a Citra and Idaho 7 New England IPA, um, called Cool It, because they use a cool ship. If you don't know what that is, Google Cool Ship. Um, so, I, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, back soon, when it's time, I think, probably to do the conversion check. And we're bang on 67. I've set the um, I've set that for 66 because I still haven't quite got this particular uh, PID to conform. <laughs> but I thought it's pointless buggering around with it at the moment. I'm going to wait until I've lagged the H uh, the um, the mash time. Right, back soon. We are halfway through, and that mash is almost sticking exactly to 67 which is where I want it <laughs> now I've double checked it using the uh, little ink bird. this sweet little thing it weren't cheap but it was alright and it was on offer I think it was um, it was Richard Williams who pointed it out dude spruce um, so I'm happy that shutting the shutter seems to have prevented Oh, look at that. Is it? No, it's all right. <laughs> Seems to have prevented the cooliness from outside. Oh, the sun's come out. How nice is that? Look at this, boys and girls. Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's not quite as lovely, though, is it? Look at these fucking suicide fucking jockeys. Can you imagine? What is going on here? Oh, please. Anyway, I don't want to think about that. It's supposed to be lockdown. It's supposed to be keeping two metres between people. Anyway, uh, it's a beautiful day. Got half an hour before the end of the mash. Um, then we'll transfer to the boiler. And then I'm going to fill this again. Bring it up to temperature. Flush the plate chiller. I'm going to clean this out with star sand. Yes, I haven't used this for the last couple of brews. This is the Firmzilla. I have an ongoing love-hate relationship with a Firmzilla, but it is a bloody brilliant bit of kit, I have to say. Um, this was a present just before Christmas, or was it October, November time? I can't remember. Um, as far as presents go, yeah, <laughs> all right, uh, thank you. Um, I have had some issues with it, I won't lie, but I think it's one of those things that you, you compensate for. Anyway, right, we'll be back when transferring. Uh, we'll do a quick test with the iodine, and then we'll transfer to the boil kettle. Uh, but I'm happy that that temperature is staying rock solid on 67. Good, back soon. Done. And almost bang on temperature. Okay, it is now time. Oh, hang on, let's keep that going. Um, to do the vol off. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is from here to the kettle I'm going to put the uh, wherever I put it that filter in line start transferring and then from here I'll come up and flush through the herms to do the sparge <clears throat> iodine test good we have now the opportunity to start transferring I'm going to do it very, very gradually. Make 
make sure we don't have any leaks. That's good, no leaks. And I think this is going to be again about. I can't remember how long the boil is. When I did my cunning plan, doesn't really matter. So, slowly transfer to the boiler and then start the sparge with the special little spargy balls. At some point I might go for a spinny roundy spargy thing but at the moment this seems to work fine. This is the flushing out of the herms. I always love this bit. Gradually clears. How beautiful is that? And Right, get the sparge ball on. And this is going to be very, very gentle. Too gentle. A bit more ungentle. That's about perfect. And I'm sparging at 78. I can always adjust this to adjust the pattern. That's why I'm thinking of getting a spinny roundy arm. But at the moment, that is about as perfect as we want it. We're over the elements. I could turn the elements on and start the uh, start to warm me up, but I'm not. I'm not overly in Ori to do that. Oh. That's nice. Don't want to suck off the grain bed too quickly. So I'm happy to allow this to go at a nice, gentle, controlled pace. Look at that beautiful day. I'm just going to show you one more time what a lovely day it is out here, boys and girls. And obviously, loads of people on the towpath but then in Sheffield the Darwin Awards contenders are uh, <laughs> fairly prolific okay back when uh, the sparge is finished and we're ready to start the boil we have a boil we have a hot break so what I'm going to do for a minute just turn that off let that settle down You don't want any boil overs and what's quite nice about that and it rises and then drops is a lot of this scummy stuff it leaves it on the edge so we don't get too much going through the filters later so let's start that boil going again lovely look at that I know it doesn't show up very well because of the steam on the camera lens it's a camera phone but now I can drop this down to one of the elements and we should see that's dropped to a nice what's called a rolling boil ah, ha, ha. and shouldn't be too much condensation today should be going straight outside but just in case we have Fanny up there just creating a little bit of extra beautiful breeze across here taking us steam outside and that lovely brewery smell will be wafting across across the canal right I'm going to set this for 75 minutes go on go lovely right we're on for 75 minutes there's a toss-up between an hour and 75 minutes but I thought earlier 75 minutes which is why I took it up to 30 because I know I'm gonna lose four and a half five during the boil 
for 75 minutes. So when I thought earlier 75 minutes, that's why I've taken it up here. Otherwise I'll add it down about a litre and a bit. You're right. How you doing Delilah? Sorry, I've put this huge cable across you. All right, so we'll be back in 75 minutes when we will add the hops and then leave them in there for about half an hour. The hops are 50 gram of Simcoe and 56 gram of Amarello. And the reason for that was I only had 56 gram in there. I'm not sure why. I think originally when I got this, um, there was 106 grams in there because I measured it 50 grams out from the first lot. So uh, 56 and 50 of Simcoe. They're gonna go in, in the big, in the big one, in there, at flame out, and then I'm not even gonna bother whirlpooling, I don't think, it's not worth it. I'm just gonna let it steep in there for about half an hour. And then uh, everything else is ready. I've pressure tested the Firmzilla and uh, I'm going to whack some star sand in there in a bit uh, and give it a good old star sand soak. That's about it really isn't it? Doesn't. 75 minutes. Go quickly when you're having fun. Alright, so we'll plonk the hop spider in. Turn this off, might as well turn that one off for the time being. Wait for the lens to clear. I've put um, 15 minutes ago, I put half a proto flock tablet in there and a large teaspoonful of used ne nutrient, <laughs> used nutrient, or even yeast nutrient. Um, I don't usually, but I've had this. Um, starter this W yeast 1318 starter going for a week and a bit not totally sure I might have overstressed the yeast a little bit there's plenty in there as far as starters go but I think a little bit a tiny little bit maybe of <laughs> nutrient <laughs> nutrient might help and I've been trying to get my head around these bloody PIDs I will I will work it out one day um, it's all part of the joy and it's also a nice sort of like because I'm not an expert it gives me an opportunity to play uh, we got those in I'm gonna give those 30 minutes and then we're going to, um, during that time, by the way, I've got this bazooka tube. I'm going to use that as a little bit of a um, a whirlpool just to pull out any large bits of matter aerials. Um, actually, no. Do you know what? I don't know. I'm not sure whether I am. I think I might change my mind because... That's what's in the bottom. Now that is already quite fine. I think that, I don't know where I've put the other little. Doesn't matter. I'm, I'm probably not gonna whirlpool it, I don't think. I might just go straight through. Where have I put it? I was just looking at it, idiot. I might go straight through this. There's a, see there's a little, bazooka in there six inch one and then the Y strainer I think that's what I'm gonna do yep so I'm not gonna not gonna go through the whirlpool I'm just gonna let that steep give it a little stir this is where it, the change goes from smelling like Horlicks to smelling like a brewery <laughs> right, 30 minutes, then we'll start transferring it. We have a transfer. Ooh. 
17.2 which is about perfect happy with that and I'm restricting a little bit on the ouch hot <laughs> obviously <laughs> on the input to the plate chiller and I'm also restricting the water a little bit just to keep it all nice and slow and nice and gentle so I'm gonna let that go through and then I'm gonna draw off a little bit to do a hydrometer reading and then I'm gonna get loads and loads of silicon grease around the lid for here so both inside the rim where the seal goes on top of the rim and then all around the bung that is the lid and then all around a thread that holds the lid down yeah done 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 that's flushing loads and loads of <laughs> silicone grease around all the here everywhere loads and loads 1052 uh, sorry 1053 on the thing um, I've got the sponding valve set for 15 might drop that a little bit later I don't know I think we've got a decent airtight seal now 14 days we leave that for and that beautiful thing that everybody likes now Everybody really can't wait for this bit. Feeding the fishes and cleaning up. It's the highlight of any brew day. So I just clean the mash tun out. I've got a big bucket full of spent grain over there. Um, I was tempted to try and do another low alcohol, but I'm not sure how the first one's going to turn out yet. I had a sneaky taste yesterday. It don't taste too bad, but Gonna give it a chance to <laughs> yeah anyway uh, cleaning up how did the filters do this was the filter inside the kettle and you can see it has captured a lot um, and if we open it up can I open it up one-handed oops you'll see it has done its job reasonably well however I still think it might benefit from being bigger this is from the wife strainer and I've had to rinse it out a couple of times don't know it's a very very fine micron mesh in there might revisit the Y strainer however am I being overly paranoid about my plate chiller it was stupidly expensive and I'm a little bit kind of protective of it however um, caustic soda will sort of like break down almost any organic substance given enough time um, could rely on that for cleaning I don't know anyway oh you might notice I've chopped the leads off the boiler that's because I'm going to put some 16 amp connectors on I, I don't want long leads coiled up and whatever so I'm just going to put some 16 amp connectors on there and then uh, some extensions to go between there and the control panel. This is the bit I wanted to show you. We put 100 grams of hot pellets into the boiler at the end of the boil. And look how they swell up. And this is after it's compacted as it's drained. So that little tiny amount of hot pellets creates a really large mass when they all swell up and that's why I went for this larger hot basket and if you watch the previous videos you'll have seen me having to make the top of the boiler entrance bigger to fit it in but there you go, that little lot there is all from 100 grams of hops. 
and that's why Let's see if I can get a better picture of that with the sun there you go and that's why I get a bit paranoid about filtering because I don't want all that in my plate chiller <laughs> right that's the end of the brew day for today uh, if you uh, if you have enjoyed this if it has been useful I will put the recipe either on screen somehow or down there in the thing description uh, if you uh, if you would be so kind as to like this apparently it does something to YouTube's algorithm Ooh, uh, uh, and makes it easier for other people to find my rubbish and um, bear in mind I'm not I'm not a youtuber I'm not a, a video maker right? I'm a bit of a bodger but hopefully you found this interesting you're very very welcome to subscribe to my channel if you click the little bell it also means you get a notification the next time I put something like this up so for now on the latest New England IPA have a lovely weekend or what's left of it and uh, hopefully see you soon.